It's always nice to find a good cheap game. Here's the best Vive games for $5 or less, organized by genre. Let's start with some adventure games. Downward Spiral Prologue is a zero-gravity exploration adventure. You move by grabbing walls and rails and pushing yourself along like you're in space. It's a little short, but very well made. There's a little bit of shooting combat, and it also features a multiplayer deathmatch mode so you can float and shoot your friends. Astral Doming is a real hidden gem. Your spaceship has crash landed on a strange planet and you need to find a power source for your ship. It's a vast open world with lots to see. The gameplay is slow paced most of the time as you explore the planet. But if you're patient, this game will surprise you. For $3 you get a whole lot of gameplay. This one really surprised me. Arachnophobia warning, there's a lot of giant spiders in there. Dimensional is a fun puzzle adventure with a great sense of humor. I've done a full video review of this game that you can check out on my channel, but I can tell you this is well worth the money. Candled Cavern is a delightful little adventure. Journey through a serene and beautiful world with a friendly little ghost pal to accompany you. There's some item hunting and some very simple combat with enemy ghosts. The soundtrack is perfect for this game. I really enjoyed this one. Now for some exploration games. Endless Labyrinth is a game without a goal. You're exploring a procedurally generated labyrinth while collecting gems along the way. That's really it. It's a meditative experience that I've enjoyed after a bad day. And with no goals or achievements to think about, I can just tune out and collect gems. It's a unique experience that I'll be keeping in my library. The Han Dynasty Imperial Mausoleums is an impressive but brief historical experience. Explore a tomb and discover some history about the Han Dynasty. It's an impressive presentation. At times, I felt that I was inside an Indiana Jones game. There's not a lot of content here, but more is promised by the developer. If you're interested in Chinese history, then you must try this. The Grand Canyon VR experience may not be considered a game, although there are interactive elements like feeding fish. It's more of a virtual tour of the Grand Canyon via a motorized canoe. The environment is rich with animals and lots to see. It's a must for anyone interested in VR tourism. Space Journey VR is an interesting one. The first half of the game is like a short escape room game, but the second half is the good stuff. It becomes a peaceful, space-flying fetch quest. I've certainly seen better visuals in VR, but something about the abstract geometry combined with the music I found mesmerizing. I know this won't be for everyone, but I found this a cool experience and I'm glad I bought it. Now for a few party games that are best enjoyed in groups. In Chicken Chase, chickens are spawning out of control and it's up to you to throw them out of the pen as fast as you can. Easy and medium modes are too easy. Hard and insane modes are the good stuff. Playing with friends makes this truly fun. Rest Cuties VR has you catching puppies, kittens, and babies from disasters and throwing them into bins. A fundamentally simple game, but there's tons of achievements and things to unlock. You may enjoy this in single player, but I think it's best in a VR party. Henry the Hamster Handler is a manic game where you try to keep an army of mass-produced hamsters safe from traps. The challenge is that the game only allows you one hand to keep the traps disengaged. Keeping up with the action is a real challenge. This is super fun to watch others play. Now for some puzzle games. Ropes and Dragons is basically just cut the rope in VR. But that's underselling it a bit because it's very well made with beautiful environments. For just one dollar, it's really good. Fun for the whole family. My wife loves this one. Whee! Relativity is a platform puzzler that will turn your world upside down. Gravity is relative here, as you'll be walking along walls and ceilings. It's a nice change in perspective in VR, and a unique experience. MC Escher would be proud. 
You can play on easy or hard mode. On hard mode, enemies are aggressive and bugs will jump on your face. I played on easy and you can see the bugs left me alone. I personally prefer it this way. Slam is simple in premise, get your energy crate to the goal, but gets very challenging. You're controlling gravity forces and all the pieces on the board respond to your gravity direction. The later levels get really hard, at least for me. It's perhaps a bit overpriced for what it is, but it's well made. Moonshot Galaxy feels a lot like Mario Galaxy, but with golf. The controls are unique. Instead of swinging a golf club, you grab the ball and aim the trajectory it should take. This one is really fun. Gnomeling's Migration is Lemmings in VR. The controls take some getting used to, but it's worth the learning curve. One nice touch is being able to move and adjust the Gnomelings by hand after you've given them abilities. If you enjoyed the old Lemmings games, then definitely check this one out. Moving on to action games, Shoot Loop VR claims to be the most realistic VR shooting range simulator. I haven't done a thorough comparison with all the others, but I'd say they're probably right. Everything feels legit and realistic. If you're looking for a highly polished shooting range, then you found it. Thirst VR is a Mad Max themed on rails shooter. This one is a lot of fun, and I've done a full playthrough of this one on my channel if you want to see more. In my right. opinion, this game is a great value for the money. Yes! <laughs> yes! Take him down, reload, take him The Path of Greatest Resistance is a nice on-rail shooter with a variety of weapons and enemies. What makes this unique is that you can move forward in your little chariot, or you can jog in place if you want to get some exercise. This one is a good value for the price. Initially, I was skeptical of Space Cats with Lasers VR, thinking it was just a silly concept to make you chuckle and nothing more. But I was really sucked into the gameplay. It gets challenging quickly, and there's lots of different power-ups to choose from as you progress. This one is a great shooter for all ages. A10 VR is a shooter where enemies appear from all around you instead of just in front of you. You can choose to play modes where they do and don't attack you with lasers. If you play the lasers mode, it gets really challenging to look all around you and keep dodging the lasers. It's a simple but really solid shooter. In Planet Fate, you're standing on a platform in space keeping the Earth safe by placing gun and laser turrets to take out asteroids. And like the previously mentioned A10, you need to be keenly aware of everything going on around you, or you'll get surprised. Whoa. <laughs> this is a fun little defense game. King Kaiju is my favorite Godzilla game in VR. It runs nice and smooth, there's lots of things to destroy, and it's incredibly satisfying breathing fire into buildings. I highly recommend this one. Ghost Pursuit VR is a fun blend of Pac-Man and Bomberman. I've done a full video review of this one that you can watch, but suffice it to say, you should really give this game a chance. I had a good time with this one. Boo Breakers The Ghostening is Ghostbusters by another name. It's a nice presentation and very colorful. I found the gameplay to be repetitive. Reveal hidden ghosts, move them to the center, rinse and repeat. But the reason I'm including it on this list is because the game is perfect for young kids. It's a great value for a fun kids game. And now here's a few lightsaber games, starting with Blade Shield. This is a wave game where you're armed with lightsabers that can switch to shields. So you can choose to deflect and attack with the swords, or more easily deflect attacks with the shield. I've enjoyed this playing both solo and with friends in a VR party. Lightblade VR is a little more true to Star Wars in that the main game is you training with a bot like Luke did in A New Hope, but there's also a bonus temple level where you face off against an evil dude. The fight with the dude is fun, but it's pretty brief. S -s 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 
Luxon Time has a few different play modes. There's a Fruit Ninja mode where you slice the red bots but avoid the green bots, and a defense mode where you try to stop them from passing by you. There's a third mode I haven't unlocked yet. All three of these lightsaber games have their own strengths and weaknesses. I'll let you decide which one is best for you. Now we have a few obstacle course games. In Fine China, you need to take a massive backpack and try to walk through a store without breaking anything. It sounds simple, but it's really challenging. It also uses a unique form of movement called walkabout locomotion. You walk to one corner of your play space, then press the grip buttons and turn around, and the game world stays frozen so you can turn around and walk forward again. After doing it a few times, you begin to believe that you are continually walking forward. This game is incredible value for just a dollar. I've mistakenly included Unsing Diplomacy in the free games video series, so here it is in its proper place. It's a spy game obstacle course that uses your room skill really well. The only catch is that it needs a lot of space. It requires 3 meters by 4 meters. If you have the space, then you must play it. Hot Run Back has you running as a powerful quarterback who can destroy objects with a football. It's a jogging in place game which includes hurdles which I find difficult to jump over while jogging in place. But fortunately you can just strafe around them. This is a great jogging game. If you play this, prepare yourself for a sweaty workout. And now, of course, some escape room games. Now technically Storm VR isn't escaping from a room, it's surviving in the freezing cold. But it's similar gameplay to an escape room game in a larger scale. I was really challenged by this one. It took me about 40 minutes to beat it, and I had a lot of fun. For the $2 price tag, it's a steal. The Baron Got You Again is kind of a short game, but I enjoyed playing it, and for less than a hot meal, I think I got a good value. It includes a hint system, which is nice. If you get easily claustrophobic, then I wouldn't play this. You progress through a lot of small spaces in this one. OK Bob takes place in a tiny room, and it's sprinkled with dry humor. One downside is that there's virtually no sound. I would have liked some more ambience or sound effects. But it's a good game for the price. Tales of Escape is a co-op escape room game to play with others. Up to six people can team up in the same game to gather clues and find a way out. And not everyone needs to be in VR. You can also play cross-platform on the PC. Playing an escape room game with others is a lot of fun. I highly recommend playing this with your friends. The Cabin VR Escape the Room is another well-made escape room game, but this one is for mature audiences only, not for kids. Dungeon Escape VR has a similar visual style to Abode, and I really enjoyed it. You can play the same room in both easy and hard mode, so you get double the gameplay. I had a lot of fun with this one, and I'm glad I bought it. VR Vacate the Room is the first escape room I ever played in VR, and it still holds up today. After you beat it in regular mode, you can play the hard mode by pushing the question mark in the menu. This is another one with double the gameplay. Inescapable VR Underground gives you an hour to beat it or you blow up. I got stuck near the end and the time ran out, but I'm looking forward to taking another stab at it. It's nicely polished and has butter smooth performance with no skipping. Really great value with this game. Alcatraz VR Escape Room is well made and it has a hint system in case you get stuck. But there was one thing that annoyed me. Spoiler alert, you need to decipher some Morse code for one of the puzzles, and I hate Morse code. But if that doesn't bother you, then you should play it. And finally, a couple of games I didn't have categories for. Chroma Lab is a beautiful fluid particle sandbox. I reviewed this in detail in another video, but let me tell you this is a mesmerizing experience, especially when you play with your favorite music since it responds to audio. Highly recommended. Intercosmos is part space simulator, part comedy. I found this really challenging because I wasn't able to remember which buttons did what. I kept on forgetting. But if you're more detail-oriented or fascinated with space travel, then I recommend it. It's well-made and quite immersive. Your velocity is too low. Initiate another burn. Your target vertical velocity is 100 meters per second. 
Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. See ya!